It is sometimes difficult to understand the concept behind the solubility product. Therefore, it is not so easy to solve exercises about this subject. I will show you a visual example for you to get the intuition behind it. I will not go into too much detail. You can find the theory in every good textbook that treats chemical equilibria. There are different terms in the context of the solubility product. The solubility tells you how many grams of a certain compound dissolve in one liter of water. For instance, barium sulfate has a very low solubility of 0.0025 grams per liter. Then we have the molar solubility. This value shows how many particles or how many moles can be dissolved in one liter. The conversion is very easy with the molecular weight of the substance. Then we have the solubility product constant or short the solubility product. The solubility product is nothing else than the equilibrium constant of the dissolution process. The products of the dissolution process are the two dissolved ions and they appear in the numerator. The solid barium sulfate is the starting material of the dissolution process and it appears in the denominator. The activity of solids is equal to 1, therefore barium sulfate disappears from this equation. We need the concentrations of the dissolved ions from a saturated solution to calculate the solubility product. The molar solubility of barium sulfate is equal to 1.1 times 10 to the power minus 5 moles per liter. Each particle barium sulfate that dissolves yields one barium ion and one sulfate ion. If we dissolve 1.1 times 10 to the power minus 5 moles barium sulfate in one liter of water, we get the same amount of ions from each kind in solution. We can calculate the solubility product with these concentrations. The solubility product consists of the product of the ion concentrations and these concentrations are raised to the power of their stoichiometric factor. If we have a saturated solution of barium sulfate, this system is in equilibrium state. If we add more barium sulfate, the excess barium sulfate does not dissolve macroscopically. If one particle dissolves, another particle precipitates. The concentration of the dissolved ions does not change anymore. Maybe you still haven't understood yet the purpose of the solubility product. Let's have a look at this virtual example. We do not calculate with moles here, but with single molecules. That's basically the same thing just with a much smaller amount of particles. The salt AB2 has a very low solubility of 3 molecules per liter. The equilibrium constant of this dissolution process is the solubility product. If 3 particles get dissolved per liter, we get 3 particles A and 6 particles B in solution. Particle B has a stoichiometric factor 2. Therefore, the solubility product is equal to A times B squared. The solubility product is 3 times 6 squared is equal to 108. What happens when we prepare a solution consisting of 4 particles A and 8 particles B? We can calculate the product of the ions that we put in solution. The reaction quotient has the same formula as the solubility product but it does not necessarily indicate an equilibrium state. We have dissolved 4 particles A and 8 particles B. The reaction quotient is 256. This number is much higher than the solubility product. The solubility of AB2 is exceeded. One particle AB2 precipitates. We are left with 3 particles A and 6 particles B. 
the reaction quotient is lower to 108. This is equal to the solubility product. There is always one particle AB2 not dissolved in this solution. Here you see a second example. The salt CD gets dissolved into its ions C and D with a solubility of 5 molecules per liter. We have 5 particles C and 5 particles D in a saturated solution and this results in a solubility product of 25. What happens when we remove one particle D and add one particle C? We get a new reaction quotient of 6 times 4 is equal to 24. This is smaller than the solubility product. There is no precipitate in this scenario. When we add 4 extra particles C, we have 10 particles C in solution. The reaction quotient is now 10 times 4 is equal to 40 and this is higher than the solubility product. Something has to precipitate here. If one particle C D precipitates, we have 9 particles C and 3 particles D in solution. The reaction quotient is now 27 and this is still higher than the solubility product. If another C D precipitates, the reaction quotient lies below the solubility product. We see that there are always 1 to 2 solid particles CD present in this solution. Let's have a look at a real example. Do we get a precipitate if we mix 100 milliliters of a 0.00075 molar solution of sodium sulfate and 50 milliliters of a 0.015 molar solution of barium chloride? Let's calculate the number of particles in each solution. Now we work with moles again and not with single molecules. Then we mix the two solutions. We have a new volume of 150 milliliters. Which particles do we have in solution? Sodium, barium, chloride and sulfate ions. Which particles can precipitate with each other? Sodium sulfate and barium chloride have quite a good solubility. Sodium chloride is also well soluble. The only ions that can precipitate with each other are barium and sulfate, and only if the reaction quotient exceeds the solubility product. We know the number of particles of each ion and we can calculate the new concentrations. The solubility product of barium sulfate is 1.2 times 10 to the power of minus 10 molar squared. We can calculate the reaction quotient with the concentrations of the two ions. You can see that the reaction quotient is above the solubility product. Solid barium sulfate will precipitate until the reaction quotient is equal to the solubility product. By the way, the solubility product is normally reported at 25 centigrades. If you increase the temperature of the solution, the solubility of the compound is increased as well. Let's wrap up. The solubility product is the product of the concentrations of the dissolved ions from a saturated solution. As long as the product of the ions is smaller or equal to the solubility product, there is no precipitate. Even if the concentration of one of the components is very large, as long as the product of the two does not exceed the solubility product, nothing happens. As soon as the solubility product is exceeded, there will be a precipitate. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have more questions or feedback, leave a comment below. If you haven't studied enough yet, subscribe to my channel and watch the next video.